I'm starting to say in good morning to you <laughs> because that's my default um, when I'm up here. But Merry Christmas to you. We welcome you here to worship on this holy night. It's a blessing, it's a joy to be together. Last year, we had a recorded virtual service and then a handful of us met in the parking lot at six and we had an outside service. So it's truly a joy to be gathered in the Lord's house. Those of us that are physically present in the room and so many more who I know are watching from home around their Christmas tree. This is a, a really different Christmas for us, isn't it? My husband and I were married 40 years this summer, and we just ate what we think is our very first Christmas Eve dinner all by ourselves. Okay, so, because the first couple years of our marriage, we were on, Paul was on leave from the Navy, and we went home, and then once we had children, we had children, right? And so, and then we've had family around, so we sat down to eat our Christmas Eve dinner and said, whoa, you know, it's uh, different and changed, but a blessing for all of us to be together. So we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now I ask the choir to stand so we can sing together. Will you please stand now and join me in the call to worship? The words are in your bulletin and up on the screen. Good news, great joy. Jesus Christ is born. Good news, great joy. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord, and let us pray together. All glory to you, great God, for the gift of your Son, whom you sent to save us. With singing angels, let us praise your name and tell the earth his story, that all may believe, rejoice, and bow down, acknowledging your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first song of praise is Joy to the World. It's number 134, and it's also up on the screen. Let us sing together. Thank you. 
Amen, and please be seated. Every year, we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light, as we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. God of promise, you have come into our darkness. Renew your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love in us. Shine your light in us, for you alone bring life. Receive God's promise of the light from Isaiah. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the deep darkness, a light has dawned. <clears throat> For unto us a child is born, to us son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When we come together to worship as God's people, especially on this holy night, it's important that we tell God the truth about all the ways that we have not walked in his paths and failed him and each other. So I ask you now to please stand and hear this. The holy child of Bethlehem came to cast out sin and to bring us the gift of salvation. Let us now open our hearts to receive what God seeks to give. Will you please join me in the prayer of confession and then take a few moments in the silence of your own hearts to confess your sins to God. Let us pray together. Holy God, you have come among us in Jesus Christ, hallowing our humanity and embodying love. We confess that we have turned from the path Jesus has marked, failing to claim all you intend for us, withholding love from our neighbors and ourselves. Be born, an be born anew in us, that our lives might reflect Christ's radiant light. And now hear the gospel, peace on earth, mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now that we've confessed our sins, let us confess our faith as together we say what we believe. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Glory to God in the highest. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Glory to God in the highest. For a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us. Glory to God in the highest. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Glory to God in the highest. To us is born in the city of David a savior, the Messiah, the Lord, Glory to God in the highest. And the word became flesh and lived among us. Glory to God in the highest. Christ is born, give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. 
O earth, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to talk to the kids now. I'm going to ask you to stay where you are. I think all of you, so all of you, all the big kids and the little kids, if you didn't get a candle when you came in, they're out there in a basket and you should like take some hymn time or something and go get them if anybody didn't get a candle, but you'll need one for later. But all the kids here, if everybody has a candle, can you hold it up? Does everybody have a candle? Can you hold it up? Yeah? Okay, yeah, big kids, little kids, doesn't matter to me. Okay, all right. So what are we going to do with those candles in a, at the end of worship? What do you think we're going to do with them? We're going to light them, right? We're, and so how are we going to light them? Do you, does anybody remember when the last time we did this? Peyton. Right. We share it, exactly. So I start, right, and I get the light from the Christ candle, which is the light at the center of the Advent wreath. And then I'll give the candles, I'll pass the light to Dale and Emily, and they're going to come up and get the light from me. And then they're going to walk down the rows. So if it's only my candle burning, is it bright? A little bit, right? But what if it's my candle and the candles on the communion table and all five of those candles? Is it brighter? Yeah. What about when Dale and Emily come and get the light and then there's their candles? What about that? It's even brighter, right? And then what when everybody in the sanctuary has a candle plus everybody at home go find a candle right now, okay? Be ready, okay? And everybody at home too, right? What when all of us are holding up our candles? What do you think it's going to look like? Very bright, right? Is it going to be bright enough to outshine the darkness? You bet, because that's the good news tonight, is the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness, no matter how dark it is, can never put it out. And what good news is that? Let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you for Jesus the light and that his light shines so brightly that the darkness can never put it out. We pray and say thank you in his holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen. And now I ask you to stand and let's sing together our next hymn. It's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's number 119, and it's also on the screen.
So lesson one, Psalm number 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness.
The second lesson is from Luke 2, 1 through 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom favor rests. Amen. Our next song, our next hymn is A Little Town of Bethlehem. You can remain seated, but let's sing together A Little Town. It's number 121, and it's in front of you. And let's pray together. Oh Lord, tonight we hear the Christmas angels telling the glad tidings. Tonight, if we were to list the miracles of Christmas, we'd probably talk about virgin births and angels and stars that light the sky. 
But perhaps tonight, oh God, we celebrate another miracle. One of Mary saying yes when God asked her to believe. And Joseph saying yes when God asked him to trust. They had to change everything about their lives. And the birth of the Christ child wasn't possible until they did. Oh God, this night we pray that you would stir up in each of us a desire to say yes to this story. We pray that you would help each of us believe that it might be possible for darkness to be transformed to light and for peace yet to come in the world. Those who know the darkness of the world know the fragility of light. We hold our breath as the candles flicker because we know they don't always last. The birth of Jesus doesn't make everything right, right now. But it shows us that the only way the darkness can be extinguished is to say yes to the birth, to the beginning of the light. We pray now for those we love who are not present with us because they're far away in a different city or state or country or because they're with you. We pray for those who are working tonight and tomorrow in hospitals and prisons, in firehouses, in so many different places who are separated from their families. We pray for those in military service who are not with their loved ones on this holy night. We pray for those who are wounded in body and mind and spirit, for those suffering with COVID and those who care for them at home and in hospitals, in intensive care units. We pray for those who are even now taking their last breaths on this earth and for their families. We pray for those whose struggles are not of the body, but of the mind and the heart. And so we pray for those struggling with addiction and despair and mental illness. We pray for their families. We pray that you would shine the light of your healing love into their lives in such a way that they cannot turn aside from it. Oh Lord our God, tonight we pray for our broken world. We know that your light shines so much brighter than any darkness. And so we pray tonight for the strength and the courage to keep shining your light, even when it seems to us that it will not ever make a difference. Give us the courage and strength and conviction to know that it will. We thank you for this night, for these people, and for the chance to gather around the manger and tell once again the old, old story of the one who comes to save. We pray all this in his holy and mighty name, for he is the one who taught us that when we pray together, we should pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The third lesson is Luke 2:15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Let's take a breath and pray together. Great God, as you came at night when all was still, so enter our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of Christ's presence that we may clearly see the way and the truth and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have a couple more scripture lessons, two from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. Paul, my clicker is just not happy tonight. Can you advance the slides for me? Thank you. Still not happy. There we go. And now let us hear the word of the Lord. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And continuing on in the prophet Isaiah to now it's 62, verses 6 through 12. God says through the mouth of his prophet, I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and his mighty arm, never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, Raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see your savior comes. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. And here ends the lesson from the prophet. And finally, the second lesson from the gospel comes to us from the prologue, the beginning of the gospel of John. Tonight it's chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And here is a lesson from John. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The baby is born. The stable is full. Angels sang. Shepherds saw the glory and ran to the manger. And we come every year to tell the story again. We tell the story of God's promises coming true, of Isaiah's good news. You heard it a lot tonight in a lot of different ways, and that's on purpose. The people who are walking in darkness 
would see the light of dawn. A child is born for us to bring peace and justice to the whole of God's earth. A child who was so powerful that his people would literally get new names. Did you hear that at the end of that passage from chapter 62? Those who are broken would be called whole. And those who were utterly forsaken would be remembered. Tonight we tell the story of the good news that our Savior finally comes to set everything right. That's the song that we sing and the story that we tell. If you've been worshiping with us during Advent, you know that we've been talking every Sunday pretty much about annunciations, which is just a fancy word of saying announcement, right? We've talked about the announcements from Jesus and from the angel to the people. Four weeks ago, we, talked to, we heard Jesus' words from the end of Luke almost, talking about the end of the world because Advent begins at the ending talking about the end of the world always being in God's hands. That's a real big one, right? I don't know about you, but I thought we were kind of over all this stuff, right? I really thought that this Christmas churches would be full and nobody would be watching from home and we would all be gathering with all of our loved ones and they would all come and visit us forever. And unless you've been you know, not listening to anything, you know that that's not the way the world is tonight. It feels to me, it's felt to me, especially the last few days, like the end of the world is really near and I just am sort of at the place of, okay, let's just get it over with, right? But Jesus says, the end of the world whenever it comes, and truly, folks, I don't think it's tomorrow, the end of the world whenever it comes is always in God's hands. That's a big announcement. The next two weeks, we looked at Zechariah, who's the father of John the Baptist. And we heard the angel Gabriel tell him what would happen. His wife, who was way past the age of ever bearing a child, would be pregnant. And the child born to her would be the one who would prepare the way for the Messiah. And the angel had to say to Zechariah, don't be afraid. Have you ever noticed that when an angel shows up, that's pretty much the first thing the angel says, right? Don't be afraid. And the angel also says, get ready. And the child is born. And we heard about John the Baptist in in the third week of Avon, and he's singing that song again from Isaiah, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then last week, We heard about the angel coming to Mary and Mary going to Elizabeth. And again, when the angel comes to Mary and Joseph, the first thing the angel has to say is, don't be afraid. Get ready. God is coming. And the story you heard tonight from the beginning of Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 2, Luke sets the story squarely in history right? When Quirinius was governor of Syria, da, 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 there really was a Quirinius, and he really was governor of Syria. Luke is telling us that this is not a once upon a time story. My kids, when they were very little, would say, mommy, tell us a once upon a time story, and we knew that I was just going to make up a wonderful story. This is not that. Luke sets this story squarely in history. It's real, real governor, real angel, real Mary, real Joseph. It's grounded in real life. And the message is pretty much the same. Don't be afraid. Get ready. God hasn't forgotten you. He's coming. And finally, tonight, we heard the story of the angels who showed up at the shepherds way out in the fields. I still have it memorized in the old King James, and there were shepherds abiding at the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and the glory of the Lord, sh- the Lord shone round about them, and they were what? Sore afraid, right? And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings, good news of great joy, 
which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day, right now today, in the city of David, a Savior who's Christ the Lord, the Messiah. The skies opened, and the angels sang good news. And so we're here telling that good news again that God announces to us that Jesus, the living Christ, the living Messiah, the living one who comes to save, that's what Messiah means, still enters our time and our space. Sometimes he enters in a friend's whisper of care and comfort and prayer. I needed a lot of prayer this week and I sought it and found it. Sometimes the angel sings to us through shouts of joy and praise. Sometimes the angel sings through a star shining in the sky. Some of us the last four weeks have been looking at the different um, stories of the nativity during our Advent Bible study. And one of the things the, lead, the writer of our study said, and we watched a video every week, was that she thinks God comes to us most often in ordinary days, in ordinary times, and that we really shouldn't look very often for miracles, but just find God in ordinary moments. So I think that's true. And yes, we do find God in so many ordinary moments or we wouldn't be here tonight. But God still does miracles and still announces himself to us in ways that we cannot miss. When worship is over and we go outside and we see the stars and the mountains, how could we miss that? Paul and I were walking at Fort Rich yesterday where we weren't in the woods, and it was sunset, which should have been 5.30, but was really 3.30, right? Okay. And the sky was on fire. And we, we, were, we, were, we were walking west. We saw the sky on fire and we got to the end of our you know, distance and we turned around to go back to the truck. And the mountains were radiant. God still talks to us in ways we cannot miss. And as well, through ordinary acts of everyday grace, singing together, sharing a meal, showing up in the midst of the darkness. We act like God does. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a German theologian and died um, at age 39, I think, um, at the very end of World War II. He was in prison because he would not bow down to Hitler and would not let the German church become the church of Hitler. And he had a chance to leave Nazi Germany and go live in New York and teach, and he chose not to. He chose to stay in Germany. And he was executed by a firing squad right before the, German, the uh, Allies liberated the camp that he was in. But he wrote amazing stories and theology that is still informing pastors and teachers and, and God's people today. And he said this amazing thing not too long before he died in a sermon, I think. The door to the world is shut. The Advent door, the Christmas Eve door to the world is shut. It can only be opened from outside. And that's what we celebrate on Christmas Eve, that one who is coming, that one who has come and is come and will come, opens the door for us from the outside. So that we, like Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth and the shepherds and the Magi and the people of Bethlehem can hear and tell and marvel and glorify and praise and do God's work in God's world. So some of us here are old enough to remember Charles Schultz and Linus and Lucy. Okay, even those of us who aren't really old enough, I've probably seen it on TV every year, right? And so the first uh, Linus and Lucy Charlie Brown Christmas special was in 1965. So I was seven, and I don't remember seeing it on TV, but I must have because it's a part of my sort of inner thoughts, okay? And if you haven't watched it lately, go watch it. It's really cool. But we all know Linus, 
right, in this story. And Linus, we know, dragged around his blankie. That's what we called it in our house with our little children, right? Linus just always had this sort of bedraggled old dirty blankie, you know, draped over his, around his neck or dragging in the dust behind him, and he went everywhere with his blankie. And sometimes he got made fun of, but sometimes it was just, hello, that's Linus. Uh, one of my children had a blankie, okay, kind of like that. And sometimes at night when he was sleeping, I'd sneak into his room at midnight and grab it and wash it and put it back before he knew it was gone, right? Okay, that's Linus. He drags the blankie around. It's his very visible <laughs> source of comfort. But in the story... Their kids, the kids are telling the Christmas story, much like our kids did on this past Sunday. And Linus kind of stumbles over to the manger, and he's dragging his blankie. But Linus is given the job of being the angel. And if you watch the movie, the, the cartoon, literally, you see an amazing thing. That Linus, who's dragged this blankie everywhere he's gone since he can remember, is telling the story. And when he gets to the place where he says, and the angel said unto them, fear not, guess what Linus does? He drops the blankie. Because in those words, he realizes that he can stand straight and tall, and God's got him. Dear friends, that's what we need to do. Out there is really hard sometimes, right? And sometimes we get it right, and sometimes we get it really wrong, and sometimes we're disappointed, and sometimes we're just joyful. But what we can do because of the baby in the manger is we can stand like Linus and stand up straight and tall and for just a little bit forget that security blanket and tell the world, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. So, if you keep watching the story of Linus and Lucy, and I know you're all going to go watch it now, right? Um, What you'll notice, what I want, if I was Charles Schultz, I want Linus to never go get his blankie again. But we know, if we keep watching the story, that he does. He goes and he picks up the blanket again. And he gets the comfort that he needs to do what he needs to do. So that's just a perfect metaphor for me on this Christmas Eve 2021 with COVID still ravaging our world. We get to tell the story. We get to say fear not and sometimes we're given the grace to just forget our blankies. But sometimes we need to pick them back back up again and go on telling the story. And that's okay too. There were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were really, really scared. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, and he's Christ the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and almighty God, we thank you and praise you for your son who came at night and whose light lit up the world so that two millennia later we are still singing his songs and telling his story. We thank you that in him we don't have to be afraid and can keep on telling his story. In his holy and mighty name, we pray. Amen. So now we come to the time in the service without which it's not Christmas Eve, right? The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has never put it out in all the long years of God's history with God's people. The darkness didn't understand the light. The darkness didn't overcome the light. 
the darkness couldn't put out the light because it's God's word, God's light, God's promise. The darkness never extinguishes the light or dampens it. I'm gonna have to get my candle. Because dear friends, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has never, will never put it out. And glory be to God for his amazing gift. I invite you now to stand. Dale and Emily will come forward and get the light from me. And then we can pass it down the rows as we sing together our closing hymn. Silent Night.